Hi Capricorn, welcome to your year ahead reading with me, Raphael Ray from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for all of your continued support. Thank you so much for being here and I hope that you enjoy your reading. So, before we start, I would like to bless both of these decks with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance. And I hope that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise and they help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So let's see what the cards have in store for you. So for the month of January 2018, and I know I'm slightly late with these, but you'll have to forgive me. Uh, the Death card. Okay, so that's actually a really good card to start off the start of the year off on, actually. So before any of you start getting all up into it. And the Knight of Wands. Okay, so this is awesome. Why is this awesome? <clears throat> the Death card talks about transformation. It talks about the, change, the changes and the transformations that we hope for, that we wish for. Now, the interesting thing is you've got Pluto, the Lord of Scorpio, because the Death card represents the sign of Scorpio. You've got Pluto in your sign at the moment. You have got um, uh, Mercury in your sign at the moment. You have... A whole stellium of planets actually, a whole horde of them in your sign and also on the 20th of December last year Saturn, your ruling planet, moved into your sign. So why is this a good thing? This is a good thing because the death card coming up as your first card out in the year says that the changes, the, the difficulties that you experienced last year, that all of the crap that you wanted to be over from last year ends and it stays firmly there. You are stepping into a brand new era, a brand new era and a brand new cycle. This isn't just happy new year for you guys, this is happy new life. You know, and what more could you ask for than the Lord of Transformation, the Scorpio, the Death card? Because that says that this is bringing an end to things and it's bringing a culmination to things. It's cutting away the dead wood. It's letting go of the things, the people, the situations, the feelings that no longer serve you, that have not got your highest interest in, in you know, in, in mind, let's say. Um, so actually, this is a good card. Now, the interesting thing is... And then you've got the Knight of Wands, and the Knight of Wands represents um, the fiery aspect of ourselves. It's the passion, it's the, the drive, it's the sensuality, the sexuality, it's getting in contact and in touch with our deeper animal instinctual selves. It's getting in touch with the part of us where we act from the spirit, you know, where we act and, and where we do what we want to do, where we choose to act how we want to act. Um, now, the interesting thing about this, the Scorpio card, uh, the death card is ruled by Scorpio, and Scorpio is all to do with, like, you know, the taboo, sex, death, um, it's all to do with psychology, deep psychology as well, it's all to do with, you know, the subconscious mind, it's all to do with everything that's under the surface, everything that's hidden, but it also, because it's ruled by Scorpio, talks about the reproductive organs, the reproductive system, it talks about how we reproduce, how we recreate, um, and this very much, you know, January looks like a very, very sexy time for Capricorn. January looks like a time where you are getting in touch with yourself and saying it is okay to enjoy the physical pleasures. It is okay to love my body, to enjoy my body, to enjoy other bodies while I'm enjoying my own. This is you tapping into what makes us human. This is you tapping into your basic instincts and desires and, you know, whether they be lustual, whether they be sexual, whether they be sensual. You know, there are other ways apart from sexuality to be sensual. You know, sometimes it's about having nice things on our skin. Sometimes it's about, um, you know, tapping into what gives us comfort, what is ultimately comfortable for us, what gives us the feeling of being sensual. And, you know, sometimes sensuality... And sensuality and sexuality are very different things. It's not necessarily about being seen to be sexy or beguiling or anything. Sometimes it's just, you know, being sensual in your own body and knowing and feeling that you are sexy, feeling that you how um, that people respond well to you, that you are pleasing, not just to their eye, but to their, you know, to their aura. And this very much, I feel, is, is about that. This, this, you've got Venus in your sign as well, which is giving you that ability to be, you know, mysterious and seen as beautiful and desirable and all of these things. You've got all of that working for you. 
And the way that I feel like this is playing out, it's like you're owning yourself more than ever before. And with, you know, the, these two cards in conjunction, this is about you tapping into what deeply makes you who you are. This is about, you know, shedding all of the past and saying, right, that crap is gone. And I'm now stepping into a new era, into a new year and a new era as who I actually am. And that is where confidence and power comes from. That's the sort of quality that people exude. And you look at them and you think, wow, you you know, you're sexy to the point of intimidation. You are beautiful to the point of intimidating. And it's got nothing to do with what the, don't get me wrong, I'm sure you guys are very, very beautiful, but it's not just about what the eye sees, it's about what the soul feels. And when you can feel the confidence and the energy bouncing off somebody in their aura, how can you not be attracted to that? So a very, very powerful start to the year. And I say animal as well, you know, the, the basal and carnal pleasures, etc. Because you've got two horses here. And horses very often represent the, um, the physical, bestial nature of the human being. So, very, very interesting. And for those of you that are celebrating as well, happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing one. Um, yeah, awesome. Absolutely awesome. So, in the month of February, what has in store for you? But yeah, just to touch on that again, uh, the Queen of Swords, awesome, and the Ace of Wands. So, just to touch on this again quickly, this is very much, like I said, it's about letting go of the previous year and letting go of a lot of previous energies. Saturn has come home. This is a brand new era for you and this, this year can be a springboard if you choose to let it. So then in February, you've got the Queen of Swords. Who is the Queen of Swords? This is an air sign female, a Libra, an Aquarius or a Gemini. This is somebody that's usually older than you, Capricorn. Even if you're like 50, 60 years old yourself, this is somebody that is around your age or older than you. And the reason I say that is because this is somebody that's experienced by life. This is somebody who is honed by life. And that's one of the reasons the Queen of Swords gets a bad rep, actually, um, as like a cantankerous woman or somebody that's, you know, very, very forthright. She absolutely is. But there's one thing that you cannot deny the Queen of Swords, whoever she is. This woman is ultimately fair. She might have a mouth of a sewer and the wit of a, a, of a sword, literally, sharp and cutting. But I tell you, she is ultimately always fair. Always. Um, and then on top of that, you have the Ace of Wands. So this mentor figure is coming into your life now and she is going to teach you how to use the gifts that you're coming into. What are your gifts at the moment? The understanding that it's okay to be ruled by your physical self and it's okay to be ruled by wanting to further and benefit from your material situation or the material life that you live. Um, how do you do that? Well, she's going to teach you to get creative. It's not just about building physical things or accumulating wealth or going for a position of status. It has to be something you're passionate about. And it's interesting that this message is kind of reiterated here, even though the death card is Scorpio, so it's water. I kind of feel, you know, because then the second card out is the wand. And it's like you've got something that is um, potentially stripping you or reminding you or... Um, giving you more savvy in respect to something that's kind of waking you up and then you've got the wand card there which is about your willpower it's about your desire to act and in the month of february you could be coming across a mentor somebody that says to you look you know what you have a message and you need to get it out there whether it comes in the shape of a book whether it comes in the form of you writing a diary writing a journal you know, really leaving a recollection of all of your experiences for your children, for other people, writing a memo, getting online and sharing your thoughts. Well, in fact, when I was younger, one of my friends had this thing online called a live journal. Um, and it was like where he used to put all of his thoughts and feelings and his experiences and other people could read it and comment it. Very similar to social media that we have now, but it was ultimately a lot more personal because it was all about him, you know, and, and people responding to that. You know, this could even take that sort of shape or form, but this is about you getting your passion and your zest for life to work for you on a material level by tapping into what it is that you want and truly need. Um, and you finding a mentor in February to really facilitate and support that. So it's a really exciting time. 
Okay, March. What does March have in store for you? Okay. The King of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles. This is interesting um, because so far you've had now three court cards out. What this kind of tells me already in the first quarter of this year, this means that a lot of other people are going to feature heavily in your life. What do I mean by that? Friends, co-workers, family, uh, siblings, children, you know, everybody outside of yourself is going to be showing up for you in the next three months in some way, shape or form. Who is the King of Swords? This is an Aquarius, a uh, Libra or a Gemini male. Usually, um, this is somebody that's very, very learned at what they do. This is somebody that could be like a lawyer, a judge, a police officer, not necessarily just in those fields, but this is somebody that really knows what they're talking about, whatever job they do. So if this person was a butcher, as an example, this person would be at the height of the butcher game. You know, this is somebody that really knows what they're talking about. It's somebody that's smart and intelligent and researched in their chosen field. This talks, and you know, the, the difference between the two. So the Queen of Swords is an older female or a mentor type or a motherly type who has a lot of knowledge and has a lot of experience, but she's quite forthright in delivering that. Whereas the difference is the King of Swords is a lot more diplomatic. He's a lot more, um, not necessarily witty, he's just more diplomatic. He's easier at, um, he delivers his messages easier because he's a lot more relaxed. He's a bit more balanced than she is. Interesting because she actually represents the sign of Libra, but more on that another time. Then you have, um, so this is somebody giving you advice. Uh, this is somebody that's giving you solid, grounded advice because it's tempered by, and again, you've got this kind of dual nature going on, which is really, really exciting um, because you've got the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is you. It is Capricorn. Um, the Queen of Pentacles is an earth sign female. So this could be a Capricorn, a Taurus, or a Virgo. And this is somebody that knows how to budget, somebody that knows how to do the dated, excuse me, somebody that works through things methodically, somebody that knows what they're doing, somebody that knows how to do life and do it very well on a practical and grounded basis. So he's giving you advice. It's like you've got two people giving you advice this month. And, you know, in the month of March, you've got a lot more people outside yourself supporting you. It's like people are there for you. They want to give you advice. They want to be there for you on a practical, on a practical level, on a practical nature. I actually see you getting, you know, some sort of financial reward from this as well. In the month of March... I see, for those of you that are dealing with legal things, for those of you that are dealing with um, anything of a legal nature, anything, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer, I can't give you that kind of advice, but I can give you the energy and the likelihood. For those of you that have had or have things going on of a legal nature, March will be the time where you get your reward, where you get your payout. For those of you that have been studying, it's where you get the yes, you're going to pass. For those of you that want a promotion, this is the month that it comes. But I can definitely tell you in the month of March, you will be experiencing finances going through a definite upswing. Okay, April. What does April have in store for you? The Leo card, the Strength card, and the the Knight of Pentacles. So, the Strength card talks about the heart. It talks about um, the spine as well. It talks about you know the, all of that aspect in terms of the physical self. But in terms of who you are, who we are, this is about finding our inner courage and finding out what it is that we choose to dedicate ourselves to, what it is that we are happy for people to see us doing, what it is that we are happy to be known for in the world, how we show up in the world. And then you've got the Knight of Pentacles, which talks about cars. This talks about, um, you know, practical modes of transport, a car, a horse and car, um, a four by four, a bus, a coach. It's any of those things. It's travel by any of those means. Um, 
And I kind of, the way that I'm feeling this, it's really interesting because one Capricorn in my life I know has had a very serious ongoing issue with, um, in, of a legal nature to do with, you know, um, automotive stuff. So, you know, this is her time actually and I'm really excited for her and it's going to come out really well. And then on another level, in the month of April, this is about you guys moving. This is about you guys finding where it is that you want to be, where it is that you want to go, and more importantly, where you're going to end up choosing to settle. Um, you know, this is very much for those of you that want to exchange a house, for those of you that want to buy a house that feel like you're ready to take on a mortgage. This is very much you finding out, why do I say that? Because the, and the Knight of Pentacles is the travel that you do. And the strength card, as it represents Leo, is the heart. It's about what you choose to dedicate yourself to or where you choose to be, where your heart is. And this is about you finding that. So the month of April for Capricorns looks like the time where you will be deciding where it is that you're going to settle, where it is, you know, where is the next step, where is the next place for me to be that makes me feel happy and secure. Um, yeah. Very, very interesting. I also feel as well, because it represents, you know, our internal strength and our internal power, the Leo card, as in Leo in the horoscope, actually represents our children as well, or the things that we create. Um, so for some of you, this is going to be about your relationship to your children. It's going to be about you taking journeys with them, um, and, you know, and taking them places to teach them things. Okay, May. What does May have in store for you? Eight of Pentacles. Work, work, work. And yeah, okay, so absolutely. Uh, for those of you, like I said, the, definitely a financial upswing at other people's hands. Uh, definitely doing, you know, more things and finding out where you want to be and where you want to settle. Um, I kind of feel, Capricorn, a lot of you are going to move for work. The movement that happens, the decision that, you know, to... to to be somewhere else, to go somewhere else, is because of work. Or you, when you get there, you discover that actually, you know, your dream job is waiting for you. Why do I say that? The Eight of Pentacles is work. Going to work, doing the work, being at work, people that you work with. And then you've got the Sun card. The lightest, most brightest, powerful card in the deck that heals and touches and uh, sheds love and abundance on everything that it touches. Um... You know, this is you getting a promotion, this is you finding your dream job, this is you being headhunted, this is you moving to where you want to be, or saying, like, okay, that's where I want to go, and then discovering that actually, when you get there, your dream job is literally just waiting for you, or finding out from your boss that actually there's a position coming up, but you would have to move for it. You know, and the reason I say this is because you start to read these things in relation to each other, and then it starts to get really, really exciting. Okay, so June. What does the month of June have in store for you? Six of Wands. I mean, it's going from better to, you know, from good to better. And the Judgment card. I mean, this is stunning. Absolutely stunning. The Six of Wands is victory. It's the success, it's the happiness procession. Um, you know, January, February, March, April, May. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that as well. Um, I have, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, I will share that when I am at liberty to share it. Uh, but I can tell you that, you know, in the month of June, you have some sort of victory, you have some sort of success that comes your way that absolutely knocks your socks off. Um, and this is something that you've been waiting for for quite some time. So the Six of Wands is happy celebrations that come about after you have put your work, after you have put the effort in. It's the, the victory parade after you've come back from the battle. It is the um, party that you throw once you pass your exams. It is the homecoming to the soldier who's been off to this. It's, it's that kind of feeling. It's that kind of experience. It's something that you've put the work and the effort in for already. This is you on the homeward journey being congratulated and celebrated by everybody that has seen you put the work and the effort in. You will have a promotion this year. 
guaranteed. Whatever you do, whether you're a baker, whether you're a CEO, I don't care what it is, what I can, what it is that you do for work, what I can tell you is you are going to take an elevated step this year in a direction that you didn't see coming. Um, then you have the judgment card, which I always see is, although it's ruled by Sagittarius and Jupiter, the judgment card to me is very much a Mercury retrograde experience. It brings things that we thought were done, that we thought were over back to us so that we can re-examine and then finally lay them to rest. Because as you can see there, it's like calling up the corpses. And, you know, I don't see it as like, oh, zombies or anything like that. I actually see this as calling things home. And when, you know, when something, someone goes or comes home, that's when it feels complete, right? And that's what this experience is. In the month of June, you guys have, you know, <laughs> you don't just have some kind of victory in terms of your work or your promotion. But you, this is like, and although none of the cards say this, the way that I'm feeling this is, this is something that you've hoped for. Something that you've put into the ether many, many years ago that you thought, oh, you know what, I've got, di you know, as I've grown, I've had different goals and different dreams and different hopes and wishes and aspirations. But this is one of those things that, you know, I never thought I'd get it. I never thought I'd had the time, the money, the da 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 and bam. It just comes back at you and you find yourself in the, the space and the position to suddenly have that thing. And the interesting thing is you have your success and your homecoming and your victory already. This just enhances that because it's like the world gives you an extra bonus for all of the hard work, for all of the effort, for all of the heartache as well that you may well have endured in other spheres of life. Very, very exciting. So that's June. Let's just move these out a bit. Let's see what July has in store for you. Okay, that one obviously wants to pop out. The Hermit card. The Hermit has made a real effort to be known this year for all of the Zodiac signs so far. You know, he's really, really coming through, which is what tells me that for everybody on some level, see my 2018 numerology video for this. Even though the numerology doesn't anything to do with that, the experience of the Hermit is um, happening for everybody this year. And then you've got the Six of uh, Swords. Interesting. The way that I'm reading this, because the Hermit card represents a journey that we take. It represents a quest. It's about us going towards something. It's about us taking sometimes a metaphorical, sometimes a physical, sometimes a spiritual, but it's a journey that we have to take. And it's a journey from out of the darkness and into the light. And unfortunately, sometimes you got to go through the dark to come out to the light. And what I see this as for you guys, especially with the Six of Swords next to it, is because the Six of Swords is about a journey away from trouble. It's about a journey that you take moving away from something that's difficult, moving away from something that you just think, you know what, I'm done with that. I don't want or need that experience anymore. But the Hermit card tempers that need to be away by saying, but what can you take from it? What did you learn from it that was not necessarily even positive, but what did you learn from it that you can use? What is a gem of wisdom that is not worth forgetting, no matter how grueling or awful or whatever the experience was, was, what can you learn from it that is valuable now, that will continue to be valuable later? Um, very, very interesting. And I, I see some of you treading old ground, Old ground overseas as well, you know, this isn't like in your immediate area. This is about you going to, you know, for some of you this will be another country. For some of you this will be another place, um, you know, but it will definitely be somewhere at a large distance away from where you've been. Um, when you get to this place, it's like in remembering the gems of the crap that you've been through, you kind of, you bring light into a dark space and when you're able to do that you are able to really and truly transmute any experience that you've had you know we can't literally go back to the past to transmute it but quantum mechanics teaches us that if we can change something in the present that changes how we've responded in the past effectively we're able to change our future 
And that is a really, really mind-boggling but very exciting prospect. So the month of July is very much going to be about you guys travelling. Um, and I kind of the way that I see this, the way that I'm feeling it, is it's like you go back to a place that you've been to many times before, and it's like you've just got this cloak, this um, shield, uh, you know, around you, and it's like everything will try to, and you're just like. You know, you don't even need to wave your hands. It's like a Neo moment for those of you that have seen The Matrix. You won't even need to put your hand up to stop the bullets. It's just, it's beneath me. I'm beyond that experience. You cannot take me back there because I am no longer there. I'm already further ahead. I'm just making this journey physically. So very, very interesting, very interesting month of July. Um, because it talks about you transmuting things and changing them for the better. August. What does August have in store for you? The Eight of Cups, walking away from disappointment, exactly. And then the Three of Wands. I mean, you know, this is great. Even the cards that are challenging or could be deemed as challenging aren't really challenging it's like this year you're really not being touched by anything major apart from anything that would make you stronger um you know what a beautiful experience of life so the eight of eight of cups talks about us so you've come away from the troubled situation or the difficulty or whatever and you've decided to take on board all of the things that are worth keeping from that experience and then this the eight of cups says that you're walking away from the disappointment and you're leaving it behind. It's like, okay, that was then, this is now, and I'm not taking any of that with me. And while people may try to take me back to where I was and who I was in that position at that time, it's just not possible because I've already walked away, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, spiritually. It's like you have transcended that. All of the things that have befelled you in previous years can no longer touch you. And the fact that you've got your own ruler in your sign, uh, you know, Saturn in the sign of Capricorn, whew, you guys are going to be unstoppable over the next two and a half years. And this really, really gives you the opportunity to absolutely cling on to your life and create exactly what it is that you want from it. And then you have this. So it's like in your decision to walk away and truly stay away from something or someone or some situation, your ship comes in. It's like you, you say to yourself, right, I've got to walk away from that because it's no good for me anymore. And then bam, <laughs> it's like you walk out of, you know, a brilliant year into something even better. Just for acknowledging your past, but not being in your past. And that's a really powerful experience to have. And then the three of wands is your ship coming in. It talks about short journeys that you take for pleasure's sake. It's like going away for the sake of going away. Um, as an example, I, up until last year, never really got to travel much. Um, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do, but you know, I never really had the, the choice, the opportunity, the money, whatever. Um, and then last year I met my partner and we have been travelling and travelling and tra people are like, are you ever going to put your feet on the ground? And I'm like, yeah, maybe when the travelling gets boring. But this is exactly that. It's you having the opportunity to do the things that you want to do, to really do the things that you want to do, to have the means, the finances, the time to really do what you want to do, that you need to do to truly enjoy your life. August is a beautiful month for you. September. Alright. Five of Cups. September is not the month for you to overindulge, whether it be alcohol, drugs, sex, drugs, rock and roll, whatever. September is not the month for you to overindulge. In fact, September is not the month for you to take any risks or any speculative risks at all. Why do I say that? So the Five of Cups um, and these two cards together is not a good thing. And in fact, it's not actually, um, this isn't a bad prediction. It's a warning. 
Um, and that's the difference. Therein lie the difference. A prediction would be saying there's nothing you can do to change this. It's going to happen. Da, 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 da. A warning, interestingly enough, Sagittarius had this same uh, a similar warning in this month. So it must be September for you guys. It'd be interesting to see what happens for Aquarius and Pisces. Um, but those of us that are born, you know, at these stages of the year, um, certainly September seems to be a month that's going to come with some challenges. So the Five of Cups talks about um, mourning. It talks about really letting something go and, and being in that experience of mourning. You know, um, and it's like you have this amazing transformative year. And then in September, you have this moment where you just have to stop and you just have to slow down. Um, the Five of Cups talks about mourning. It talks about having to let something go. It talks about not crying for spilt milk. Um, it talks about making peace with exactly what is. Um, and then you have the Tower card. So, and this is what, another reason I say because the Five of Cups is actually the card of alcoholism. Um, you know, drinking too much, smoking too much. It's about overindulging to the point where it takes a physical toll on you. So September is not the month to do that. Then you get the Tower card. And the Tower card is... It's what we thought in our minds was safe, was concrete, was forever. We then realise suddenly, very suddenly usually, it wasn't and it isn't. Um, so the month of September has some startling realisations to be realised. Um, and for some of you, I have to call it how I see it, because it's been screaming at me since I pulled these cards. And I'm like, <sighs> really? And there's only one other sign that's had this uh, this message. Um, and But unfortunately, me being the reader that I am, I always tell what I see and what I feel. I feel that the month of September, some of you may lose a family member and it may well be sudden. Um, I'm very sorry to have to give that uh, warning. I don't think it's a prediction, like I said, but this is what I kind of feel from this because the five is the morning and, and you know, the, the tower is a sudden change, sudden realization, sudden catastrophe. And when I see these two together, it's something or someone leaving our lives very suddenly and very, very finally. Um, on a personal level, like I said, this is not the month to overindulge. It's not the month to take reckless, uh, reckless risks for anything. Uh, October. The Emperor and the Three of Swords. Very interesting set of cards now. The Emperor represents the sign of Aries and it represents authority, it represents institutions. This could be hospitals, it could be universities, schools, doctors, um, you know, anything that is an actual the institution itself, not the hierarchy like, you know, the government or anything like that. This represents the institutions. So it could be, like I said, a police house, a police house station, police station, um, a hospital, a university, anything of that nature. Um, and the emperor is very much to do with ruling our lives and stamping out, uh, you know, marking out our territory and saying, this is mine, this is what I'm going to do now, it's where I'm going to be now. Um, you know, and very much, the, and it rules the head as well. So this is about what we think about. Uh, it's about the way that we plan strategies. It's the way that, you know, we put in place a plan for what we are going to do next. And then you've got this, the Three of Swords, and the Three of Swords represents a separation. The Three of Swords represents, um, you know, something that hurts our heart, something that we have to. Just had a light go off there. Oh. Oh well, um, yeah, it represents uh, something that we, we have to separate ourselves from effectively. You know, it talks about something that we have to let go or something that lets go of us. Uh, and I feel that this is about a strategy. This is about you making sure that um, something or someone can no longer hurt you. And this is about you making that decision of, right, what do I want or what do I need in my life now? And the reason you come to these sort of big decisions that you're making for yourself 
is because you have this experience the month before in September where everything is questioned because you realise how impermanent everything actually is. Mm. October. Uh, no, oh, that is October. November even, sorry. Queen of Cups and the Ace of so uh, the Knight of Swords. So the Queen of Cups, who is the Queen of Cups? The Queen of Cups is a water sign female, Scorpio, uh, Pisces or Cancer. Um, this very often represents a mother, it represents a wife, it represents um, a motherly figure, somebody that's warm and nurturing and kind. It represents somebody that is um, able to tap into our emotions, but more importantly wants to emotionally champion us in some sort of way. This is somebody that wants to look after you um, in the month of uh, November. And then you've got this, the Knight of Swords which usually talks about aggressive, fast, very quick com communication. I'm going to be really honest with you, Capricorn. Um, after everything that's happened, it's good for you to question everything. It's good for you to question people. It's good for you to decide what you want to remove from your life. Um, however, don't do that in a rash way, because as you will have learned by September, nothing is permanent and nothing lasts. And sometimes we end up saying or doing things that we can't take back. And uh, November is very much going to be a month where you will fight with, uh, not fight necessarily, but I feel like there's going to be strong words with the women in your life. Whether you are male, whether you are female watching this reading, the month of November is a time for you to really temper what you say to the women around you and how you say it. Find some way to communicate how you feel that isn't destructive. And finally, December. Ten of Pentacles, absolutely beautiful, especially for you guys. And the Fool, I mean, wow, that's really powerful. Why? Ten of Pentacles is what every Capricorn wants, the happy home, the stable home with enough finances, riches and all the rest of it to be looking after everybody. It's about a family unit pulling together and being secure in their dwelling, you know, and this is the old people, the young people. It's about the whole family coming together and being secure. It's about having abundance and prosperity and having enough of those things to share amongst all of the people that you call your tribe, that you call your kin. December's going to be a real powerhouse month in terms of money for you guys, um, as will March, as will May and June. So yeah, March, uh, March, May, June and December are your money months. Uh, these are going to be the months where money is really, really um, prominent. And then finally, you've got the full card conjunct in this, which kind of says to me that this is about new places. It's about new people. It's about you rediscovering your tribe. It's about you rediscovering what and who is your security. And more importantly, discovering that actually it could be people that you haven't spoken to for 20 years because you fell out or whatever. And then they suddenly become a part of your family. Um, you know, this is about you revisiting things or making the old things new. And more importantly, it's about making the life that you have now reflect the life that you want in every way, shape or form. And the full card brings you exactly what and who you need at exactly the right moment that you need it. And there's going to be a lot of surprises for you guys in December. There's going to be a lot of things that surprise you. There's going to be a lot of people that surprise you. Just when you think you have everything and everyone in your life figured out, you will then realise that actually you don't. So this year is going to be a doozy for you guys. It's going to be really, really amazing at points. It's going to be difficult at points. It's going to have definitely a very big variety. And it can be everything that you want it to be, Capricorn. Um, I just think you're going to have to approach things slightly differently. And you'll learn about people by learning about yourself. 
So, um, this is your key to the year card. And this is one of the cards from the Luminous Spirit. I've been using them. They're absolutely beautiful. That card seems to want to pop out. Uh, I've been using them. I love them because they're simple. And in that simplicity is their power. Let's see what your key for the year is. The Moon. Very, very interesting. The Moon card represents many things. But ultimately it represents the Mother. It represents the sign of Pisces, it represents your mother, it represents your matriarchal lines, it represents your intuition, your instincts, your innate power, it represents the power of water, therefore the power of your emotions. This I believe is something that this year is going to teach you. It's going to teach you to tap into what you actually feel and to demonstrate and communicate and express exactly what you feel. And you are going to be examining, this would be a really good year for you, for those of you that, that want to, to go through some kind of therapy, to go through some kind of um, past life regression, all of that stuff. Because the Moon card talks about our past. It talks about our shared past, our ancestral past, our matriarchal lineage past, all of those things. A really, really powerful year for you. Um, let me know how it plays out. I wish you an abundance of love, light, peace, prosperity and abundance itself and I really hope that this year is everything that it promises to be and it shows you that actually in the best way you don't have it all figured out and there really isn't any plan. You know, you, you will make the plan as you go and that plan will be perfect for what you do, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I love you. Take care.